What's up everyone, welcome back to Total Exposed. All right, now following on from the video we did on the channel recently, which was kind of a beginner's guide to Final Cut Pro 10, uh, we're gonna actually start delving into some more advanced bits and bobs within the software today. Yeah, in this video, we're gonna look at how you can work with audio in Final Cut Pro X, so let's do this. Let's do it. So we've got a selfie little clip here we filmed last year while doing the review of the uh, Rode Lav Mar Road Smart Lav. That's the one. Yeah. Class Pro. That's the one. Um, it was filmed outside, so the audio is a bit needs a bit of work on it. Yeah. So this, like you like Neil just said, is a lav mic recording, which tends to be, especially on a cheaper lav mic, a little bit tinny. They sometimes come out on just the one channel. Uh, they're not stereo. So there's some work we need to do on this clip in general to make it kind of decent. Um, so here's our clip firstly, uh, I'll just play this for you quickly. Okay. Test one, wind noise. We want to see how well these smart lav pluses... So as you can hear, like I say, it's coming out of uh, the left channel only. Um, the video itself hasn't been edited yet. You did your little jack in the box yeah. at the beginning, which was <laughs> awesome. Um, and it sounds a bit tinny and nasty. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning is I would always, I mean, it goes without saying potentially, but you should use a decent pair of headphones or speakers when you're editing your audio. We're gonna go against that and just yep. use laptop speakers for the purposes of this. Um, but you don't want speakers that are too bassy or anything like that. A good, just a nice reference pair of, uh, of earphones would be yep, good. Definitely recommend that. Listen to other people's <coughs> YouTube videos or listen to other things that you think, oh, that sounds good with those headphones and then directly compare what you're working with potentially with that is a, is a good tip. Okay, so the first thing we always do when we're editing a clip is uh, we tend to go and make a compound clip of the big long clip instead of editing and chopping up that. The reason for that is Final Cut Pro, unlike other kind of editing things like Pre uh, Premiere, they have audio channels. Yes, yeah. Final Cut Pro does have something similar. They have audio lanes, but I, I prefer to drag my audio effects onto the clip itself. Right. The problem is, once you start chopping it up, you then potentially have a hundred clips you've yes. got to go and apply this to. So, first thing I always tend to do is make a new compound clip, and I'll just call this of anything. Um, and now, when you make cuts, you're not affecting the underlying master clip, and you okay. can apply your audio effects directly to that, and it will cascade and bubble up to all of your cuts. Right, so you've got to make the change once. Yes, indeed. So, again, if we were to start here now, okay. and go to where we would actually probably make you come in. So, uh, if I was to just cut that there, the underlying clip, when you click through here, can see it's all greyed out. Oh, I see, okay. And any effects we make to the audio here will bubble up through. So that's our first tip. I would always recommend doing that. It's a bit of a time saver later on. Okay, one question I've got before we get started with this. So say we've got audio from a lav mic, but yeah. also filming on the camera. Is there an easy way of matching the two up? Yeah, so in this instance here, I've already got, you can see here, this was the original camera audio, uh, and this was the separate lav mic audio. Um, and this was it synchronized afterwards. We've actually done a video previously on how to synchronize um, your audio to your video if you cool. use an external recorder. We'll stick a link up here somewhere to Wherever that video. that comes out. Awesome. <laughs> So coming back to our clip, I think the first thing we would probably want to address is getting the levels kind of equal, left and right, yes? Yeah. Test one, wind noise. We want to see how well the... So as you can see, the audio is coming out of this of this left channel only. Okay. Um, so the easiest way I find of, of doing this is by adding an effect, and that's how we'll be doing most of our work with the audio here. So we'll go into the effects panel. Um, and at the moment we're looking at all audio and video effects, but if we scroll down, we can just limit to just audio effects. Um, and this is called, um, if you look for a direction mixer, we can drag this onto the clip. Now make sure you're on the clip inside the comp, not in the one on your main timeline. Drag this on. And this has a bunch of presets. Um, we can say uh, stereo to mono. Yeah. <laughs> Now we can look at a picture of you struggling with your lav mic, which is good. <laughs> we 
want to see how well these smart lav pluses do when dealing with ambient wind noise. Okay, so there's our first our first step complete. Cool. Um, and now basically everything else we need is going to be living within this effects panel. Um, ideally, you want to be aiming for your audio to be sort of sitting around the minus six. If it goes a little bit above the minus six dB mark, then that's okay. Uh, it gives you a little bit of headroom for any kind of peaks. You definitely don't want to be hitting zero or above. If you do that, you'll notice and it will be going red and it will be clipping. So the, you, there's only really two kind of effects I, uh, I think we tend to use for our speech. One is a compressor, right. one is EQ, and then finally maybe um, just a general kind of volume at the end, maybe a limiter. The compressor makes anything that's quite quiet a bit louder and right. anything that's quite loud a bit quieter to kind of... Normalise the... Yeah, it kind of crunches it down <laughs> so it's all more consistent with each other. Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, and then an EQ is, well, I'm sure you're aware of what an EQ is. It kind of just changes how bassy it is or how trebly it is or mid rangey it is. Um, so if we start with a compressor, now you have a few options. We'll just go with this compressor here and drag it onto the clip. You'll see that your effects start stacking up one on top of each other. Much like all other effects kind of work in Final Cut as well, they will process top to bottom. Okay, so the order they're in does have an effect. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so if we now listen to our compressor, like I say, we've got, um, they've got some decent kind of defaults. So we could go into voice potentially and try voice compressor one or vocal compressor one. And uh, let's just see what that's done to it as a get-go. Test one, wind noise. We want to see how well these smart lav play. That's already a huge improvement, yeah, I think. Yeah, that sounds good. You can do further tweaks in here if you wanted to, but I find that the, the, the presets are pretty good. You can also have a bit more finesse over your input gain and your output gain. I think on ours it seems to be quite good, but if it was coming in a bit hot and you applied a compressor and it was now suddenly very loud, yeah. uh, you could just turn this final output gain knob down here to just kind of bring it back in line again. Um, and you can normally see the waveforms kind of updating as a preview real time as you're adjusting the things even oh, without yeah. listening. So if I crank this up, you can see that's going to sound absolutely horrendous. Let's have another listen. We want to see how well these smart lav pluses do when dealing with ambient wind noise. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Okay, so as I said, the other effect that we tend to use is just um, an EQ. So if we search in here for an EQ, uh, you have sort of presets of remove high frequencies, remove low frequencies. Uh, so if you were recording in a room with like an air conditioner or a fridge or something like that, and it was this annoying kind of rumble, uh, they have got some preset ones you can drag on. But you could also do that with a channel EQ yourself and you just can really yeah. tweak it yourself. So yeah. if we drag on an EQ, now again, these have um, some decent sort of... Presets. Presets, yes. Uh, we could do male vocals one. And you see this adds a little bit of bass, a um, bit more mid and a bit more treble to the sound of your voice. Okay. So let's have a little listen to that. And a foam hat attached, which should do a good job at cancelling out a lot of the wind noise. But let's try the mini fur. If we really accentuate, say, the, tr the treble. A lot of the wind noise. But let's try the... So, um, obviously that sounds horrendous, yeah. but I think in your example here, that maybe we might want a little bit more of like low end um, and a bit less here. And basically, there is no right or wrong answer for whatever we're about to do here because it entire, entirely based around what your clip is that you're working with. Yeah, and obviously filming, say, outdoor would be different to so if you have inside like we are now. Absolutely. Controls. But you'll notice here, where if you're working with the tool, that we have different ranges that it gives you. Okay. Um, you can have a bit more control over which part of the frequency band it is that you want to attack the kind of amplitude of it and also the size of the demand. So if you had the very specific annoying frequency that you were trying to dial out, you could use these tools here. I find they're pretty good. To really pinpoint it. Yeah, so um, if you over accentuate the, the state of it and just listen to your clip and kind of slide it up and down the range um, and just see where it is this, this annoying thing kind of lies. I've currently got the standard foam hat attached, which should do a good job at cancelling out a lot of the wind. So there's like a funny yeah, thing. Let's just say that that was really bugging you. Yeah, um, wind noise. But let's try the mini fur. 
you could tuck that right out of the way if you wanted okay. to. So it's good for like hisses and things like that. You can like move it up and down, find the hiss, make it really loud, <coughs> then drag it all the way down, get the hiss out. Pretty good, right? This is our before. Test one, wind noise. We want to see how well these smart lav pluses do when dealing with ambient wind noise. And then this is our after. Test one, wind noise. We want to see how well these smart lav pluses do when dealing with ambient wind noise. Well, that's world's better, isn't it? Really? It's very pronounced and it didn't take very long at all. A couple of minutes. No. Uh, so yeah, just equalize out your channels if needs be. Yep. Um, add a compressor. Tweak anything you need to tweak with the EQ. Yeah. That's all we really do for audio. Get that level around the minus six. Absolutely. I find with audio, it's one of those things that you could spend hours and hours just tweaking you know, the, the fine tune of it. Um, You're best off getting it correct before you get into the editing yes. software. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. A good microphone, close as you can to the subject, um, is always going to be better than trying to save it afterwards. Yeah. But if you needed to, there's loads of tools built into the software that allow you to do it. Well, there we have it, guys. That's how we uh, work with audio within Final Cut Pro. Um, now, we're no, we're no audio engineers by any means, but um, that gets us by, I think, for our videos and sorts out any issues that you may have along the way. Yeah, I found it quite useful, coming okay. from a, a beginner-y kind of background on Final Cut. Cool. Um, so, yeah, if that was useful, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, um, hit that little bell icon too to be notified of our latest release. Awesome, and we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, see you in the next one.